Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Sport Show right here on Smash FM here on a Tuesday here in Melbourne. Of course, uh, let's uh, go from Brisbane down to Adelaide in particular and speak with the reigning uh, Sample W champions, of course, that is the Glenelg Tigers. And of course, as you can probably tell by the shirt, but uh, um, but of course, they defeated West Adelaide. Uh, so we've got, we got two uh, very special guest joins right now that tell us a bit about it. Thanks both for joining us. No problem. Good to be here. No worries. Well, get uh, both of you to introduce yourselves and tell us what position both of you played on grand final day. Jess Bates and I play in the midfield, sometimes rotating, uh, rotating in defence. And I'm Chelsea Packer and um, I play in the fourth line. You finished second on ladder, of course, you, uh, you knocked off Nord, who were on top of the ladder, and obviously Nord went out in straight sets. But uh, where was the turning point? of the season now, reflecting back? I think that Adelaide Oval game against Sturt, when we drew, I think something just um, clicked. And if we didn't put our foot down, we were, we were going to regret it later. So I think that's when I think. Yeah, you know, I agree. Um, after that game, we got together as a playing group, um, chatted a few things through, um, really redefined our goals. Um, or refocus towards the goals that we set at the start of the season. And um, must have worked out. We didn't drop a game after that point. The influx of the season, wasn't it, uh, in the Sanford W? Obviously, with the AFL W was still going. Um, it was a big influx between the uh, the teams that had AFL players and then teams that didn't have AFL players. And it seems like the latter flipped um, in the second half of the season with the Obviously, yourselves were outside of the top four um, when all the AFLWs came back and all of a sudden you just went back into the top four. Was that the difference? Um, I don't think so. Um, for us, we didn't regain uh, Ebony and Caitlin until obviously after the AFLW Grand Finals. So they came back a little bit later than you might have seen. Teams like West Adelaide um, who had players in and out, um, Caitlin nor Ebony came back during the season. Uh, they only came to us at the conclusion of the final game of their season. So I think for us, um, it was that belief that we built internally, kind of as Batesy and I both mentioned before, after that players meeting, um, the belief increased. What do you reckon, Batesy? Yeah, 100%. I don't think we got Goldie or Ebb back till round nine, maybe. And mm -hmm. I think the third game was about round six. So we did have a, we were progressing from that Sturt game, I think. Um, yeah. yeah, well before the, the girls came back from the AFL. Tell us a bit about the amazing run in the finals. Um, you got into second position, which was the double chance that, that you needed to achieve, which you did. Uh, you beat Norwood um, in the uh, second semi to go straight through to the grand final. Um, tell us a bit about the second semi first before I ask my next question. Yeah, I think going into it, we obviously... Obviously, a bit of nerves going into your first final of the season. Um, but I think we were also mentally strong that and we believed in each other. So we, we went in pretty confidently, but we were prepared to, to take on what Nord were going to bring. Yeah, I agree completely. Um, that belief was there. We knew that if we had 22 on the field playing their role and the um, you know 8 to 10 who were unlucky to not make that game day side, they'd played their role in the week. Uh, leading up to that as well we had complete confidence that every person was going to do exactly what they needed to do and that collectively we would have come through and um, we, we saw that happen and I think it was a complete arm wrestle all the way through but you know going out there in that fourth quarter we knew that we wanted to get the job done and we had complete belief that we could and, and that translated on the scoreboard uh, with the flurry of goals there right through to I think we scored one with 20 seconds to go in the game. So we wanted to run all the way through that finish line and, and we certainly did that. Where do you think the turning point of the second semi? Oh, I think three quarter time, to be honest. We went out there and went, we are this close to booking our spot in the grand final. And um, yeah. yeah, we just want to experience that sense of disappointment. Um, we wanted to charge right through to the grand final and through the final siren of that game, in the grand final as well. So uh, I think for me, yeah, that's probably the biggest turning point was then. The, yeah, the second. I think the first half we went in kind of with that mentality of 
if we lose, we've got that second chance behind us. But coming into the second half, I think we were like, oh, we're on here. We don't need that second chance. We'll just go straight through type thing. Question I want to ask is the grand final um, against West Adelaide. Now, number one, before I go on about the grand final, um, were you surprised that Nord got out in straight sets after the game that you played in the second semi? Um, I'm assuming you had a chance to sort of see them in the prelim. Um, were you surprised that Nord went out in straight sets in your versus West Adelaide, who came from fourth? I wouldn't say surprise. I think they, they're both such strong sides in their own type of way. Um, I think it, it could have gone either way, but the game Norwood put up against us was very tough. And so was West in the grand final. So I think, yeah, not surprising that. No. no, I think, um, you know, finals is a whole different beast. You can be the best team um, with minimal losses throughout the season, but finals brings a whole nother element. And to be honest, like to Norwood's credit, it was a goal in the dying minutes of the game that, that knocked them out of that of that prelim. So to, to West credit, they kept fighting. Um, I think every team has shown that throughout the season, though. Every single team has shown that they can push any other team to the limits, which is a great thing for our competition. I think we're going to see a whole um, another level of, of competition next season and, and any, any team could go all the way. Um, but... Yeah, for Norwood, look, they're a strong team. They're an experienced side. Um, that Their time's not done. They're going to be a competitor for the next few years. At, um, you can never write off Norwood, um, but I think West kept the foot down and, and um, scammed the momentum. They had it right when it mattered. The grand final. The question I want to ask is, how did you manage to... Uh, Stop uh, Lauren Young, the uh, sample W Bess and Ferris. Uh, Jessica Bates, that's how we managed to do that. <laughs> um, no, I, she's so good. She's a very tough player. She's an exceptional player. Impossible to defend against. Them intercept marks she takes is just unbelievable. Yeah. I think I just think as a side on the day against their whole side, it was just yeah. We showed up. Yeah, I, I agree. Lauren is a is an exceptional footballer. Uh, to be dominating in that way at the age of fifteen, pushing sixteen, is just outstanding. Um, you know, we hear the words generational talent, and I think she's definitely a person that you can pop that label on. Um, she's highly respected um, around the league, and um, she wasn't a focus for us. Obviously, she's an exceptional player, but. We're never going to put our focus on one person. We put our focus on what can we do um, to keep to our game plan. And I think that's what got us over the line. We focused on what we could do, what we could control. Um, obviously, not kicking to where she was is a big thing. Um, but, hey, we got we got one of our own very highly talented players in our team in, in Batesy. And to see those two go up against each other, I think I was caught um, watching the game at times, just watching those two go at it. So... Um, yeah, look, Lauren's fantastic and I think we're going to see her have um, a fantastic career in women's footy. Um, but, yeah, she certainly had the opportunity to break that game open and she did at times and, and definitely nullified our, our attacks. So, um, yeah, we were just able to keep pushing, I think. The one thing I noticed in the grand final against West Adelaide, which was very similar from what I saw when I briefly saw your team play at home to South Adelaide a um, month earlier, was that you really worked really well together um, from the back line uh, to the midfield and obviously to the forward line. Um, has that been a real um, difference between last season to this season? Because that's what I saw from, the, from that South Adelaide game, which I actually end up seeing again in that grand final. The flow effect from the back line to the, to the forward line. Oh, 100%. I think our, our whole bond as a team this year was 100 times better. And I don't know if that's because of that Darwin trip we had um, early preseason. Um, I think it really just brought everyone together and it, it showed on field, I think. Yeah, and, you know, we probably brought in um, a little less players this season than we have in the past. So, you know, having consistency in um, and, and experience, there's a lot to be said for experience. Um, don't get me wrong, we had a few 
we had a number of players debuting at Sanford W level this year, but that the cohesion, as Batesy mentioned, certainly grew this year. Um, that sense of all in and, and everyone playing for each other rather than themselves was evident this season. Um, yeah, I think we we built, built that belief that we are capable of great things and it's going to take 40 girls to do that, not one person on their own. So that was a huge shift for us, team belief. Was there a particular moment in the game that you felt, you know, we can actually get to enjoy the moment? Jessica Sell kicking a goal 20 seconds into the game was a pretty good start. But, yeah, yeah obviously you can't, you can't count your chickens before they hatch. And West is such a powerful side that, it, you know, it wasn't until three, four minutes to go in the final quarter that we went, they can't score four yeah. goals. Now. Um, it's like you said before, Packer, like in the semi-final, I think we kicked the, the last goal in, the, in 20 seconds to go. So And so are they in their prelim. So. Yeah. Not taking the foot off the pedal at all, really. I think once the siren went, that's when we that's when we could enjoy it. Yeah, I reckon I turned to the ball and sort of pushed down West's end, I think, um, in that last minute or so. And right. I turned around to one of our other forwards, Caitlin Swanson, and, you know, she'd come to us from Sturt. She was ex-captain of Sturt and um, had been up against it a fair bit. Um, hadn't experienced a win in Sample W until she came to Glenelg. And I sort of turned to her about 30 seconds to go or a minute to go. And went, we got this. And um, I think at that point, you can kind of go, yep, yeah, we know, even at AFL level, no team's going to score four goals in one minute. So from then, you kind of went, yep, yeah, we got this. And um, I don't think we heard the siren. Uh, me, and, me and Swanee, we were already sort of getting around it a bit. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty special feeling, that's for sure. What did that premiership mean to the team, but especially for the club in its 100th year? I don't think you can write this sort of script, Will. Um, We've been talking a lot as a club at um, where we've come from and the history that the men's program has been on. Essentially, that's what we're celebrating is 100 years of the Glenelg Football Club, which we completely acknowledge was started as the men's program. Um, For us to to kick off, you know, the 100-year celebrations with a premiership win um, obviously means a, a great deal to the club. Premierships are those things that bring the club together and, and continue to build up clubs. And with our men's programs from league to under 18s, absolutely flying. Our under 16s made the eight grand final as well. Um, the club's in a really strong space, and um, you know we're we're pretty chuffed to be able to say we we're the first team that we won in 2021. So um, yeah, now we, we've set the tone, and um, hopefully we bring three more cups back to Brighton Road later on in the year. You put the pressure on the boys now to, uh, <laughs> to uh, carry the load? Absolutely. Um, we had a, a function recently and, um, yeah, I think any opportunity we uh, get into them and say, oh, come on, boys, you know, we've set the tone. And, yeah, that, they had a great win a couple of weeks ago. It was the day after our grand final. They were down right. by uh, 47 points a few minutes into the third quarter and we continually let them know that we got them over the line that day. Uh, with our superior cheering. But, um, no, nah, look, there's there's a great relationship there between our men's program and our women's program. And um, it's all in, in uh, good banter. But, um, yeah, I think they're trying not to focus on that pressure of, hey, we're 10 and zip um, or, hey, it's a club's 100th year. And I think that's what's really changed in both of our programs is we're not putting too much internal pressure or taking on the external pressure. We're focusing you know, it's cliched, but the, each week at a time, um, you never know what, what's going to be thrown your way, whether it's on the training track, um, injuries that just pop up or then during games, um, how the other club's going to show up. So, um, yeah, hopefully they get the job done and we'll have pretty pretty solid 100th year. A couple of premierships in the 100th year, that'd be great. Oh, absolutely. And I don't think um, we've seen a club yet win the senior men's and women's in the same year here in SNFL, SNFLW. So to do that in a hundredth year would be, uh, yeah, again, something you couldn't, you couldn't script. One of the special things that I, um, I think was the very first one I've seen um, in Sample W is that, uh, you know, you get like, obviously you get your medal presentation from the kids and obviously you give them a very special gift. Uh, obviously I think it was the flag, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, when I looked at the photos, 
I guess, how special is that to um, get reward medal from the kids? Uh, obviously, they're hopefully to look up to you as role models and to give something back to them. And have they, do they, um, you know, have a chance to talk to you after the celebrations were sort of done? No, we didn't get to talk to them, actually. I think that would have been cool. Um, but no, I think it's good to to show young kids, especially young girls. I think there was a few young girls in there that, you know, women's footy is getting bigger and bigger and and hopefully one day it'll be, yeah, just as big as the men's. So it's good to be kind of a role model to young girls starting their footy careers now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to echo what Batesy said, it was a couple of days after the grand final that uh, one of our teammates was tagged in a shared post and it was the parents of, of one of those little girls who um, gave, gave that player their medal. I can't remember which player it was, but... Um, yeah, for this parent to then write, you know, you made my daughter's day. Um, it's just really special to to think that we are in a position to do that. Um, I don't think we can ever um, devalue the, the the space that we're in and, and the role that we that we get to have um, in you know being a role model or um, a point of aspiration for other young girls and even young boys. There's plenty of young boys out there in their Bayes gear cheering us on and um, that's when you know that change is, is happening is when you start to see, um, you know, even older blokes out there cheering along as well um, just because they love the game. So, yeah, it was pretty special and, um, you know, hearing those young girls that, and seeing their faces, they were just chuffed to be there. So hopefully we've got plenty of future footballers and a few new Bays fans as well. How good was it to hold the Premiership Cup uh, in, in photos and how long did both of you wear your medals around your necks for? Well, first, we couldn't get the Premiership Cup out of uh, Captain Kellogg's hands. But, uh, <laughs> Once we got a hold of it, it was unreal. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, unbelievable. And, you know, then <clears throat> handing it to your folks to, and loved ones to, to let them have a hold as well was pretty special. Yeah. I don't think I took my medal off for about three days. <laughs> yeah. I reckon mine was, uh, yeah, around the neck. Um, yeah. as soon as I wake up the next day and in the pocket, take it to work and uh, show that off a bit. Um, I still my on my bench. Yeah, well, mine's uh, yeah, in the room there and I just can't believe it. Um, you look at it, you go, this, this can't be real. Uh, it's a pretty special feeling for sure. Tell us a bit about your amazing... Uh... Premiership captain, Ellie, and obviously your amazing Premiership coach. Um, I think they're both awesome, obviously. Um, Kellogg's leadership and her, her drive to make each individual's development better as well. Um, she's always there for, for anyone that needs. Yeah, she's just she's an all-round great person, really. Same yeah, she's... She's definitely um, taken to the role like a duck to water. She's an exceptional on-field leader. Um, the way she goes about her game every week, you know exactly what you're going to get from her. Um, she she shows up every single week. And, um, you know, we we are so lucky to have her in our colours because I tell you what, I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of, uh, of a Kellogg tackle or a fend-off either. So, um, yeah. And for, for Kel... To Captain Glenelg in, in our premiership year, you know, she's one of our fa one of our two remaining foundation players. Um, mm. You couldn't wish more for her in that sense as well. So, yeah, we, we're really lucky to have her leading our group. And, um, you know, obviously Jason coaching as well. Um, we had a pretty difficult year last year. Mm. And um, for him to stick it out, to take on feedback um, and to, to actively implement change um, yeah. I think, has been... Yeah. As well as the captain like in Ellie um, with Packer and the leadership group as well, and communication with Jason. And you know, when that, that round six kind of um, change happened, that's when the leadership and Jason got together and, and obviously helped the team out a bit. So that was good in them. Yeah, we've got a really great space for two way conversation. And I think that um, is essential to sport and any organisation, um, you know, if you've got a top-down sort of structure, then you, you're going to have a lot of unhappiness, whereas we've got a two-way um, parallel sort of 
space, well, not parallel, but, um, you know, it feeds into each other and that's really important. And I think that's been a, a big game changer for us too. Had a couple of players debuted for the club. Um, now, also, did you have a couple of players that played for the Youth Girls SA team that came down to Melbourne earlier this year? Uh, and tell us a couple of those yeah. players uh, we should watch out for. Uh, Brooke Tonnen and Tams and Morris. Bates, you want to talk about Chook? Oh, Chook's awesome. She's very, um, very versatile player. I think she played up forward with us last year. Mm. Um, and then this year she's settled down on the half back. So, yeah, she's one to watch for sure. She's got a very, very bright future ahead of her in her football career. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We'd love to see her stay in base colours, but um, I don't know. It, uh, I hope I hope she stays in base plays, but equ- base colours. But equally, um, you know, she's worked her butt off from juniors and coming from the southeast where there was no women's footy available. Um, you know, she's played with the boys and then made uh, local academies and been able to come up to Adelaide and. Um, go to school up here and then, you know, we'll take her in with open arms and uh, she's worked her butt off. So I, w- I wish her every success come draft time. Um, she's been invited to the draft combine. So um, no doubt she's she's been having some conversations. I'd be shocked if she hasn't. Um, but, yeah, she, she'll definitely be one to watch to take that next step um, as well, yeah. I have to ask, how did both of you get involved in footy and why did you choose it? Um, my brother played um, when I was younger, obviously, he's a couple of years older than me. And then, yeah, obviously wanted to get stuck into it as well. I always played netball as a kid. And then, yeah, played four years. I think I had to stop when I was 12 and then got back into it when I was about 23. Because so my partner, partner said, why not? And he played for a local club. So I joined the women's team and, yeah, here we are. Yeah, I've probably... It's very similar to Batesy. I've got a few more years on Batesy though, so I'll throw back further to Auskick and uh, finishing up Auskick, there was no next steps. Um, I was from a small country town with uh, pretty conservative views and um, once Auskick was done, it's over to the netball courts. So mm-hmm. yeah, played a lot of netball and then um, didn't take it up when I was living in Adelaide uh, for uni. Moved away again and then when I came back to Adelaide, I sort of went, yep, I've got to give this a crack. So Started my footy career at the fresh age of 28. And uh, here we are four years later with a sample premiership medal around the neck. So, um, yeah, I think we're still in that, Batesy and I are still in that space where um, it's a whirlwind uh, step up. Uh, Like Batesy, uh, I think Batesy had one year at at, uh, Sawful level and then made the transition to Sample W and um, I had two there in in Sawful there, our our amateur league. And then, um, yeah, came out to Glenelg and I've loved it for a minute. Well, pretty much just almost answer my next question, which is what does the sport of football mean to both of you, especially playing down there by the bay, uh, down there at Glenelg? Yeah, I think I think growing up with the sport and um, all my family being involved in the footy, footy kind of life, always watching it on the TV, always kicking it down the park, I think it just brings people together. And I think the same down at the bay, um, especially with the one club mentality that we had this year, means a lot. Yeah, yep, same for me. Uh, growing up, you know, watching my dad play, following my brothers around um, all areas of the southeast, uh, watching them play footy and just dreaming of the day that I got to do that and um, thought it would never happen. And, yeah, so to just pull on a Glenelg Guernsey, a club that I barracked for growing up as a kid, um, I thought that was, you know, as close to the dream that I'd get. But uh, running out on Adelaide Oval earlier this season was certainly a pinch yourself moment. Um, but then, you know, we went ahead and out, did that one as well and got ourselves a flag. So um, it's been pretty special, pretty happy with what we've been able to accomplish over the last few years. I should write the start what position you both play on the field. If you had a preferred position where you love to play next season, where would that be? <laughs> I, I reckon I'd stay in the midfield. I'm I'm enjoying it. It's yeah, good. I I would not last two minutes in the midfield. I don't reckon <laughs> I'd last one one contest. So, um, having come from uh, the back line last year up to the forward line, I've had a bit of a taste of both ends of the field, and um, I think I'm pretty happy in the forward line now. Obviously, kicking goals is great fun, but um, 
it's just added a different element to my game and I'm, you know, still able to push up the ground a bit and go for a bit of a run. So, yeah, I'll just go wherever coaches think I can best serve the team, but I'll just stay clear of Batesy. Good on. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that should get involved in footy uh, for next season, which I'm assuming pre-season starting, I'm assuming in a couple of months' time, uh, for yep. next season, what would be your advice to them to get involved now with the defending champs? Oh, come on over. Just come on in. Come give it a crack. Like, you don't want to live in regret for not giving it a go. Um, I think we're a great place to come to because our coaches have this amazing talent of um, spotting diamonds in the rough. Um, they can see those glimpses of um, talent there and uh, we, we look for culture and character but you know the skill development stuff 100% back our coaches in to um, you know build that in individual players but we want to see character first skill can can be grown um, and I think we've got the best in the business when it comes to that yeah 100% I think our coaches also um, have that belief in in the players they come across to and they see something in you that you know, you might not see, but they'll get you to believe in it um, yourself. So, yeah, yeah awesome. I agree. Now, you, if, if either you had any player sponsors this year, you might as well give them a bit of a shout out. Um, I'll shout out uh, Spino, Spino Care Chiropractor in Salisbury. And uh, I've got Flinders Private Hospital uh, down here in Bedford Park. So, uh, Thankfully, I haven't had to go visit them during the season and I'd like to keep it that way. But, uh, yeah, we thank them for looking after us and keeping our, all our players on the park when needed. Now, let's finish up with a couple of lighthearted questions about your teammates now, uh, which is, uh, who had the most embarrassing moment on the field first? Oh, I was going to say off the field. That would be Batesy. I cleaned her up at training. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> Chelsea um, later had um hard bump in the in the preseason and she dropped me square uh oh, never live it down. And I don't know if you know Will, but Batesy and she's gonna hate me bringing this up, but Batesy had 99 tackles for the season, um, with a top tackle count of 16 in one match. So um to take Batesy down, and I'm not renowned for my tackling or my strength. So to take her down, um, yeah, it would be um yeah, not something we would expect yeah, to see. Yeah, she's, she's not letting me forget about it, that's that's for sure. But on the field, I don't know, did, oh, Jess, Jess still copped a falcon. Um, did. I did trip over my laces when I had when I had a free kick. That was pretty funny. <laughs> Have you not seen that video, Papa? No, yeah, I think no. I got I got a free kick for something, and as I was running back, I, I tripped over my laces and... Oh, I love that. We've all been there. I reckon I did that in my first, my very first game of football uh, or second game of footy when I started up the old lace trip right in front of Dana Cox from the Crows who was running water for us at Morphy Park. So, <laughs> um, yeah, not really how I want to be seen. But, uh, yeah, as for others, I don't know. I, yeah, I, think, I think just a couple of Falcons in the season. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Kellogg, Kellogg loves to get the arms up in the air when she's being tackled, just to ham it up a bit, which is uh, always <laughs> on the way. So. How was the celebrations like uh, after the game? Big, big oh. celebrations. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. I think we all just went reckon, back to the club and got around each other. Yeah. I reckon our team manager um, and uh, deputy team manager were probably best on ground at one point there. Um, <laughs> Dear Tina, she's been with us since the start and, uh, yeah, she was probably one of the first to reach into the esky when we got into the rooms after yeah. the game. So. Um, but I think, to be honest, like, you know, yeah, premiership celebrations can get a little bit messy, but I think we were in a space where we were just in disbelief as to what is what had, we'd just achieved and, um, you know, there was a lot of just reliving moments and getting around each other and... Um, Singing the song, I think we sang that at least 100 times um, just on the bus trip from Thebe Oval back to the Bay, which is about 20 minutes. So, um, yeah, it was just a lot of love in the, in, the, um, in the air that night. Everyone was just overwhelmed with joy, I think. Who's the comedian in the team? Packer. Yes. Packer's pretty funny. 
Nah, if you're after bad jokes, I'm probably your gal. But um, I reckon, oh, Kellogg's always a great laugh. Kellogg's um, Swanee, Swanee can be quite funny. Swanee and Chiggy together. Um, oh, unreal. Unreal. Swanee, Laura Chigwin. Um, everyone's everyone's got their own I'm unique thing about them. Sure. Who's that, Batesy? Oh, everyone. Yeah, everyone's got their yeah. own their own sense of humour. I'm just having a look at the team list there. Like even um, Sammy Franson's always mm. a cracker. She comes out with some great lines. Um, but yeah, everyone brings their own bit of humour um, yeah. to, to the squad. So yeah, it's, it's a good, good space. It's it's good to have a bit of lighthearted fun um, just to keep us grounded as well. About celebrations, any good singers or dancers in the team we should know about? I've seen Chook do a few TikToks, Brooke Tonnen. Yeah, Chook loves it. Um, TK, TK loves a bit of a boogie. Tessa Con. I think Mira, uh, well, I think Miz loves a dance. Miz loves a dance and a sing, Mira Gervin. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah nice. probably the young kids there, like. Even um, Nipper gets around the, the yeah, TikTok dances. Yeah, Thames and Morris has a bit of a crack. Um, Oh, even our, one of our assistant coaches, Braden Talbot, he loves a bit of a boogie too. So catching oh. uh, out the corner of your eye, just having a little bit of a boogie over in the corner when we're warming up. So, Either of you have a pre-game superstition or ritual? Oh, I think there's a few things, like pass to the night before. I always listen to, to my favourite music, depending on what type of mood I'm in, but try to keep it pretty simple and not overthink it, I think. Yeah, I'm probably the opposite to you, Batesy. I love a bit of overthinking. Um, yeah. No, nah, uh, it's probably for me, it's when I put my boots on. So I'll get to the rooms and I'll take my boot bag out of my um, backpack, put it under my seat, boots out, um, my footy socks on there and then my under socks on top of those. And they'll sit there until coach starts talking and then I'll put the, the socks on, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. So... Um, yeah, that I like. It just keeps me focused on something else while we're going through the serious stuff. But yeah, food and um, and fluid intakes is a big one for me as well. I try and keep that pretty consistent. Um, tape on the wrist every week as well. Um, but yeah, same pair of jocks every week. I don't know. I could go on, but I won't. <laughs> so everything, everything you could possibly do, Packer does. Yeah. <laughs> So two-part question to finish off. First, the, the first part of the question is, who has the best nickname in the team? And the last part of the question is, I know you're not supposed to do this during COVID time, but do any of the, either of you kiss the Premiership Cup? Oh, okay. So we'll go to the second part of that question. Our restrictions are a lot looser than perhaps up there in Melbourne. And, and shout out to everyone up there in Melbourne. We hope you're doing well. Um, Everyone did manage to give it a little kiss on the Sunday morning. We uh, we yeah. uh, had CEO, CEO and board member cook us a um, barbecue on the Sunday morning and, uh, yeah, everyone circled around and gave a little smooch in different spots there whilst maintaining our 1.5 from the cup at all times. Um, it may have looked what? weird to, to yeah. anyone but, uh around the oval that morning because we were just kind of in a circle kissing the cup. It was kind of we weird. Didn't really, we didn't mean to and it just happened and then it was weird and then we just went with it. Oh, Chook, look, Chook Tonnen, Brooke Tonnen um, kind of got a little snack a little bit after she uh, <laughs> referred to one of our assistant coaches as looking like a bit of a snack at one point. Um, I think that was the best find that was handed out this year, to be honest. I think so. Um, as for <laughs> other nicknames... Oh, I'm Jace, Jace likes to give out a few nicknames. You've got Shaylee has Buckets. Yeah, yep, Buckets because she was a college bowler um, and then rocked a bucket hat um, at a, <laughs> at a, a, a coaching session. Um, he, sure. tried, he tried, I think, I don't think anyone's got a, a like crazy nickname, but the worst nickname giver would be our coach. Um, he, loves, he loves to try and make nicknames take off. Um, I think you Anya the, the money nickname, Bankovic. Yeah. We got a player, Anya Bankovic. So he called her money in the Bankovic. 
and it just didn't there's go a few, anywhere. There's a nickname floating around. Yeah. I don't know if there's any big bad, bad Big Bad Batesy. BBB. I have the name. BBB, Big Bad Batesy. Um, yeah, nah. We're pretty, we keep it pretty, uh, pretty chilled out at Tigerland. But both of you, thank you so much for giving up your time to join us and tell us all about this amazing uh, grand final, um, especially amazing season for the Tigers. Uh, let's hope, uh, please send our best wishes to the men's for us as well. Uh, obviously, yeah. they're, they're going pretty well at the top of the ladder as well in the 100th year for the club. And um, let's hope the men's can complete um, the, the premiership uh, as well to share with, with the women's. and But most importantly, congratulations on winning the very first uh, premiership for the women's program at Glenelg and uh, fully fully deserved it. And um, hopefully I'll be coming over to Adelaide uh, next season and hopefully uh, getting down to uh, going down a Brighton Road and uh, down by the bay. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care out there. No worries. And that's uh, Jess and Chelsea there. Join us from the Glenelg uh, Football Club. Of course, win uh, their first uh, Sample W Premiership with a big win over West Adelaide a couple of weeks ago. Um, there's, if you want to get down there by the bay uh, for next season, we'll put all the details up on how you can go about uh, getting involved down there at Glenelg in 2021 and 22 season. There's more on the Smash Sports Show right after this. Don't go away here on the Tuesday edition. <laughs>